why G-Man is never actually referred to as such in-game in Half-Life. The G-Man, a mysterious and enigmatic character in the Half-Life series, is never referred to as G-Man in-game because the developers, Valve, chose to keep his identity and purpose a mystery. They wanted players to speculate and form their own theories about who he is and what his role in the game's story is. Additionally, the character's name, G-Man, is derived from the term, Government Man, which also adds a layer of secrecy to the character. Why the all-knowing Vortigan will regale you with songs of your past exploits in Half-Life. In the Half-Life series, Vortigaunts are a race of alien creatures who possess advanced technology and psychic abilities. The Ornoic Vortigaunt is a specific character who is able to recall the player's past actions and events in the game and sing about them. This is likely done to create a sense of continuity and immersion for the player as well as to add to the overall mystery and intrigue surrounding the Vortigaunts and their abilities. Additionally, it also serves as a reminder of the player's progress in the game and the impact of their actions on the story's universe. In Half-Life, why does City 17 originally contained an Ender's Game-style arcade? It's not entirely clear why the developers of Half-Life, Valve, chose to include an arcade in City 17 that resembles the game from Ender's Game, as they have not given any official explanation. However, it's possible that it is simply a reference to the novel and movie Ender's Game, which also deals with militaristic training and alien invasion, as a way of adding an extra layer of commentary on how the citizens of City 17 are being used as pawns in a larger conflict. Additionally, it could also serve as an Easter egg for fans of Ender's Game, adding a touch of nostalgia and familiarity to the game while also creating a more believable and detailed world. In the Half-Life 2 Episode 2 original trailer, Alex is injured by a calamitous fall. But in the actual game, a hunter impales Alex in the back instead. Why is this? Gordon? Oh my god! The reason for the change in the way Alex is injured in the final game, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, is likely due to the developers, Valve, wanting to add more drama and tension to the scene. In the original trailer, Alex's injury from a fall is not as visually impactful or emotionally charged as her being impaled by a hunter which is a powerful and dangerous enemy in the game. The change in the way Alex is injured also serves to increase the stakes for the player, making the situation more dire and urgent, which creates a greater sense of tension and urgency in the game. This change was made in order to improve the player's experience and increase the dramatic tension of the story. Why in Half-Life Episode 2, Dr. Arne Magnussen makes an obscure reference about Gordon's debacle at Black Mesa, which is the microwave casserole scene in the original Half-Life? Good heavens! What the hell? Security Officer Tarek, please 
<laughs> you think you can fix the vending machine too, college boy? Oh, and never... Freeman, if you pull this off, I might just forgive you for that debacle at Black Mesa. You know the one I mean, involving a certain microwave casserole. The reference made by Dr. Un Magnuson in Half-Life 2, Episode 2 to Gordon's debacle at Black Mesa, is likely meant to be a subtle nod to the original Half-Life game. The scene in question, where Gordon Freeman uses a microwave to heat up a casserole, is a memorable and iconic moment from the original game and it is possible that the developers of Episode 2 wanted to pay homage to that moment and to the original game in general. Additionally, it could also serve as a continuity nod and a reminder of the first game, as well as to show that the events in the first game have had an impact on the characters and the world of the Half-Life universe. It also serves to create a more believable and detailed world where the events of the first game are still remembered and have lasting effects. In the game portal, Chell wears an advanced knee replacement gadget. The Combine wear the same gadget. Why is that? In Portal, Chul, the player character, wears an advanced knee replacement gadget, which is a device that enhances her leg strength and jumping abilities. Similarly, the Combine, the oppressive alien force that controls the game's setting, also wear the same gadget. The reason for this similarity is likely that the advanced knee replacement gadget is a piece of technology that is available and in use in the game's world. It's possible that the device is a standard issue equipment for the combined soldiers as it enhances their physical capabilities, as well as for Aperture Sciences test subjects like Chill. Additionally, it could be that the device is a common technology used by different groups and individuals in the game's world, and the developers wanted to reflect that in the game. It also adds a layer of believability to the game's world by showing that the technology is widely available and used by different characters. In Half-Life, why does Gordon never speaks? And a few words, aren't you? The Half-Life series, the protagonist Gordon Freeman never speaks, which is a narrative choice made by the game developers, Valve. There are a few reasons why they might have chosen to do this. Firstly, it could be seen as a way of putting the player in Gordon's shoes, making them feel more like they are in the game world, and allowing them to make their own choices and decisions. Additionally, it also serves to increase the sense of mystery and intrigue surrounding Gordon, as his thoughts and motivations are not explicitly stated. Furthermore, it also allows the developers to avoid the use of keeping the player in control of the gameplay at all times and making the experience more immersive and interactive. The silence of Gordon also adds to the tension and sense of isolation as the player is left to rely on nonverbal cues and the game's environment to understand the story and the characters. Finally, it also allows Valve to have more creative freedom, as the player can interpret Gordon's actions, thoughts and emotions as they see fit.